I grew up on the West Coast. I am through the roof. I'm so stoked. Anybody from that part of the country definitely knows what I'm talking about. Those are huge. I don't cook salmon. I've only tasted it a couple times. I didn't even know salmon could get that big. Canada is famous for this remarkable fish. It can be prepared in many different ways. Tonight, we're going to show you three of our favorites. Glazed, encrusted, and poached. We're getting schooled today. Love it. I've been waiting for a fish challenge. My personal favorite is glazed salmon. First of all, with glaze, it should be nice and thick. And make sure it's sweet for caramelization. Watching Chef Alvin in action is amazing. I'm trying to capture it all in my brain so I can use it later. It should come out looking like this. And you notice these beautiful bits of caramelization? Now that's from sugar. You want a bit more caramelization? You can always choose this, all right? Be very careful, especially if you have long hair. You don't want a haircut. Alvin's a comedian, but the blowtorch trick is awesome. How you doing? Salmon is the ideal fish for crusting. This fish here has been breaded with almonds, lemon, and some herbs. This is gonna take four minutes. Then you're gonna flip it over. Don't move this fish a lot. If the heat is on too high, you're gonna char the outside. You're gonna burn it. When you're done, this is what it should look like. It's a beautiful, Chef. You should have a perfect medium rare center. Chef Claudio has like this suave feel to him. It's almost like he can do it with his eyes closed. OK, home cooks, I'm going to show you how to perfectly poach this beautiful filet of salmon. What I have in my pot here is a court bouillon, the liquid that is seasoned with aromatic herbs and spices. Now, you can use any number of ingredients in seasoning your court bouillon and bringing on flavors. I just gently slide it in and let it poach gently. I do not want to see a roaring boil when you're poaching salmon. I like the poaching method the best because you're not really hiding the taste of salmon. You're just enhancing it. Pink on the inside, beautiful, medium rare. It's wonderful to watch the pros do it. They make it look very easy. I hate them. <laughs> I love salmon. I eat a lot of it. I'm going to respect it. And I'm very pumped on this challenge. Look at Barry and Trevor. They already started filleting their fish. Barry started to make his first cut right under the gills exactly like you should, turning the knife back onto itself and then cutting right down the backbone of that salmon. I got a sense he's done that before. My wife and I live right on the water in Vancouver. I have friends that are fishermen, so I had better do this salmon proud. I was a waitress at a Japanese restaurant for three years, so I got to constantly observe sushi chefs break down whole fish. You cannot have any hesitation. You need to do that one fluid motion, and you need to commit to it. I'm going to be using strong Asian flavors and techniques to impress Alvin today. This is definitely going to set me apart. Trevor, Trey has two fish heads. Did your salmon have two heads? I borrowed a fish head from Miranda. Why? Because I am going to be doing some crispy fish eyes, and I wanted more than two. Coming from a Chinese family, the eyes is a very special thing. I'm doing okay? it for you, Chef. Oh, I'm so touched because, you know, I never get the fish eye because my mother always takes it, OK? What kind of glaze are you going to do for the salmon? I'm going to be doing an Asian-inspired glaze. Mm -hmm. I have oyster sauce, some honey for that sugar, get it yeah. really nice and caramelized. You have only 45 minutes, remember, OK? Yes, Chef. I think the trickiest technique out of all of them is the poached, because you don't know quite what's happening in the middle of that fish. If it is overcooked, that fish will fall apart. I'm a little worried. I know that it doesn't take long to cook. I'm guessing it's probably going to be about four to five minutes. I went to see Trevor. He's doing four eye salmon, it's just for me. And don't be jealous. There are four of them. So you can have my I fish eye, don't worry. Eye. And also, he's got some pickled carrots and also some crispy potatoes. A lot of complicated techniques there, in my opinion. It sounds like a tall order. That's ambitious. Oops. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. You need to be cooking your salmon soon if you haven't done so. Miranda, ever cooked salmon before? I haven't, Chef. How are you going to win this challenge? By doing what I always do and cooking with the flavors that I think will work well together. What 
is in your grave. I did some rhubarb, honey, some chili oil, mustard, fish sauce. It's right here if you wanted right to there. give it a little taste. Very, very interesting. You know, I love rhubarb, and I've never used that in a glaze, OK? So this oh. will be the first for me. <laughs> you got a lot to do. I'm going to let you do it. Thank you, Chef. All right, good luck. I did a chili, honey, and rhubarb glaze salmon over a spinach and mushroom salad with toasted salted pine nuts. Plating. I think you've done a great job. What I like about it is it is clean, tight, compact. So I can't wait to taste. Let's see what we've got. The fish is tender, moist. This rhubarb works. It's, it's... <laughs> Overall, the flavors are really solid. Seasoning, I think, has a great balance to it. The glaze, I think you could have been just a tad more generous with it. A little advice. This dish requires a little bit of crunchy texture, a little crispy piece of rhubarb. Just a light oil, pop it in the oven, let it crispen up, use it as a garnish. But it's a great dish. Thank you. Thank you. It's an Asian-inspired glazed salmon with crispy skin, crispy eyeballs, and enoki mushrooms. Visually, it's stunning. Thank you, Chef. These eyeballs, I mean, they're staring at me right now. There it is. You can see that nice piece of really soft gelatinous. You got it just perfect. Thank you, Chef. Perfect. Now, I'm going to cut into this. What am I going to see? Hopefully, a medium rare piece of fish. Look at that. You nail this one. It's perfect cooked on this salmon. That's nice. A fantastic glaze. It's got that sweetness. Thank you, Chef. I would prefer a little bit more glaze. And I told you, Okay, to get it nice and thick, because that would give it a bit more flavor. Barry, please bring up your dish. Last but not least, Barry, fantastic. I prepared a pine nut panko crusted salmon and a mustard lemon lime cream sauce. Your presentation's improving. Thank you. You nailed the cook on the salmon. It does not get much better than that. Let's eat. That crust, wow, it's super light. I think the dish is very impressive. There are a few flaws. You had a little bit of a hot spot in your pan. The way to mitigate that, rotate that fish. So take a little peek underneath and see what's happening. Get into your food, right? I'm not a big fan of cream sauces with fish. If I were you, lighten it up. Use a vinaigrette. Start to cook outside of your comfort zone. Very, very, Chef. very. You look irritated. Did Miranda, you know, poke at the bear? Just tell me. A little bit. How are you going to use that to your advantage? I'm going to just channel a little bit of being pissed off and focus on what do I need to do with a rather sparse basket. OK, so what are you doing? Today, I am making pan-roasted halibut served on corn pudding and a corn salsa. Good luck. Thank you, chef. I came up with a pan-roasted halibut with a red onion, jalapeno, and lime jam, corn jalapeno pudding, and a roasted corn salsa. How do you feel you did with those ingredients? 10 out of 10. That's pretty confident. Yes, chef. <laughs> it forced me to do something I had never done before and techniques I've never used before. Let's have a taste. I think your corn salsa here is light, crisp, has that lime to it, fresh, big flavors. Halibut, I think, is cooked very, very well. The corn sauce, for me, could do with a little bit more seasoning. You just need to bring that sweetness out. Sure. Overall, I think it's a pretty good dish, and it's really great to see you being forced to use something different. Thank you, Chef. I'm OK with the budget wallet. The budget wallet doesn't scare me. I've grown up with a single mom, so shopping on a budget is normal to me. 
My mom brought me to Canada when I was about three years old. And when we were growing up, we were pretty economic when it came to shopping. A lot of vegetables, that's for sure. I'm gonna be making uh, some seared cod, because I couldn't afford halibut. I'm gonna use all parts of the fish, try to get a stock, and I'm gonna be making a corn succotash with it as well. I wanna have a nice sauce, because uh, usually that's what you do when you're balling on a budget. Michael, so you too got the high-end budget to work with. I did get the high-end budget to work with. So I'm doing a, uh, a paella with prawns and scallops and a little bit of crab meat. And I made uh, charred pepper chimichurri underneath and kind of cut through the richness of it to give it a bit of acid. What would the uh, rest of the guys back at the fire hole think of a dish like this? I think they're going to request it as soon as they get back. And hope it's good enough to keep you in the competition. Me too. Thank you, Chef. Good luck, Michael. There's a saying in the fire department, when we go out to buy stuff for lunch, people say, oh, let's just see what's on sale. So to shop with no budget, beautiful. You got this, buddy. I'm, I'm really hoping that they like it because this plate is what I'm about. Made an elevated version of a paella. I think the plating looks really quite inviting. Thank you. And the cook on the scallop, I'm hoping to find it barely cooked in the center. That's the plan, chef. Moment of truth. Moment of truth is right. If I was you, I'd be happy with that. Thank you. Look at that glistening sheen to it. Tells me that it's still nice and moist. Absolutely delicious. Thank you very much. It's got real depth of flavor. It is what I want a paella to be. I think the chimichurri here, the acidity level is quite high on it. I think it could have been toned down just a touch. But all in all, the dish is terrific. Thank you very much, Chef. Michael V, let's eat. It's pretty amazing. Did you put some of the shrimp shells in the stock? Absolutely. You can taste that, it comes through. You know what you're doing. You can see there's experience behind this. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you very much. So I've got a piece of cod that I seared sitting on top of a corn succotash, and I've got on top some zucchini. Uh, I was given a budget of $10, so I wanted to use that $10 to show what upscale could look like. Wow, that's very intense, in a good way. Oh, okay, thanks. God, you scare me. The succotash, the fish, everything works really well together, and that sauce ties everything together. $10, it's astonishing that you pulled this off. Thank you. It's cooked beautifully. You used every byproduct of the ingredient possible to compact and intensify the flavors of this dish. Hello, Jessica. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So how long has Andy been trying to impress you with his <laughs> cooking? Andy and I have been together for almost 16 years, since we were only 15 years old. Once I realized that uh, cooking could impress her, I started really pouring it on. It worked, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. So what are your plans today? Uh, citrus coconut ceviche. Use the beautiful sea scallops, and Jess actually has a cracker built on top of that to play with some texture. And then we're going to have some height and some beautiful colors with a salad on top of it. I'll let you both carry on, because I can see you got a lot to get done. Good, Good luck. Cool. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful. It's such a cool moment to be able to carry this dish up with Jess. To share this with her is amazing. So it's a citrus and coconut ceviche on a bed of dragon fruit. And then Jess tackled a pistachio coconut cracker. Terrific. So you had to reinterpret your East Coast scallops. This is a great little dish. I love the flavors. There's a good amount of acidity there. I think some of that shaved raw coconut in there would have been a nice little touch. It would have added another dimension to it. But I love the colors, love the texture of the pomegranate. Great dish. Congratulations to both of you. Thanks, Thank you, Jeff. Chef. So I like the fact that you have this wonderful crispy component here. Is this your first time making a cracker? It is. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm. Great flavors. Very punchy, great citrus, great pop from the chili. Overall, I think it's a really wonderful dish. I think you were trying to really show off for Jessica. And by the look on her face, I think you've succeeded. Absolutely. Thank you. Will do. Thanks, Chef. I think I deserve a spot in the finale because I'm different than the two other home cooks. My food is really playful. That's completely unpretentious. It's just accessible, but really delicious. We're gonna go for a Korean-flavored Nova Scotia halibut tartare with some kimchi puree and uh, a yuzu custard. It's the flavors from my travels in Asia using Nova Scotia produce. It's a play on kind of all my life experiences here. I'm caramelizing this kimchi to bring out the flavors more. Oh my god, that smells good. 
I know Mike and Becky are gonna go very traditional, so I'm gonna go the other way, much more bolder, deeper, spicier flavors. Okay, what do we need? Come on. I wanna make sure that they're beautiful, bite-sized pieces of tartare, so just making sure that they're all even as much as possible, and uh, yeah, just gotta get through as much as I can as quick as I can. You know, when you're making a tartare, I really believe that it separates the home cooks from the real chefs. You have to have impeccable technique. Those knife skills have to be very sharp, very clean cuts. A nice dice, not chopped. Come on, come on. At Andy's Halifax Hawker House, the guests have been served his Korean spice Nova Scotian halibut tartare with caramelized kimchi and yuzu curd. Let's dig in. Well, I can tell you one thing. It does look like something that you would get from a hawker stand. But you know, this is a pop-up restaurant. I would like to see a little bit more refinement in the presentation. He loves to work with Asian flavors. I think he's nailed the halibut. I love the flavor of it. However, I think the caramelized kimchi was a mistake. It overpowers the delicate flavors of the halibut. He was a little heavy-handed. He needs to pull back a little bit and find the balance. I thought it was very creative. Absolutely beautiful plating. The balance between all the texture, the sweet, the salty, the spiciness was amazing. We took pictures. We're definitely going to share it on our blog. So I think it was great. I would give it a 9.5. The protein is shrimp. I picked you, so I know you've got this. Now, prove it to these two. Home cooks, are you ready? Yes, yes chef! Your 45 minutes starts now! Hey, how badly do you on the way, Avery? <laughs> so bad that I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> what I love about shrimp, there are two great flavors. One is the sweetness of the shrimp meat itself, and then the great flavor that comes from the shell, the umami. This is the best kitchen in Canada. It's nerve-wracking. I gotta be perfect. Shrimp cooks in the flat. So time management is gonna be very, very important here. I wanna be the first mom to win MasterChef Canada. I'm making a Thai green curry with grilled shrimp. I need this white apron to change my life. I was not able to get the time off work to compete in MasterChef Canada. So I quit. It's done, and here I am. <laughs> I want to work with food. When I was about five years old, I started pretending I had my own cooking show. I've been waiting for this my entire life. I have to do it. I need that apron. You have 30 minutes left! Jennifer, it already smells amazing, I've got to tell you. <laughs> Thank you, this is a shrimp and corn charge. MasterChef Canada is such a spectacular leap from my day-to-day. -day. I'm a policy analyst and it has been safe and it has been comfortable, but I have always loved food. There's this backlog of expression, especially through food, that needs to come out. I just know like my heart is going to ache mm. if I don't take some risks. I brought you here for a reason, because I think you have what it takes. Thank you, Chef Claudio. Wow, Jennifer, I am really intrigued by this, OK? Yeah. Explain <laughs> how this is shrimp to me. I just really wanted to make it the hero of the dish in every way that I could, and then push it a little further. What you have is the shrimp and corn tart. I toasted the shells of the shrimp. I find it almost like a popcorn-y flavor, so that's why there's popcorn there to bring that out as well. This really is a unique and original dish. Thank you, Chef. Very interesting. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Chef. Those judges have a pretty sick poker face. I don't know what they're thinking. Hi, chefs. So tell us about the dish, please. This is a Calabrian-inspired shrimp and grits. Very beautiful. I mean, it's a spectacular-looking dish. The ratio, it's just too much grits. Need a bit more of meat, but very, very tasty. Thank you. Thank Great you, time. judges. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Tell us about your dish, please. I've made a Thai green curry with grilled shrimp. In a fairly big dish like this, you just gave three shrimps? Yeah, I was a little stingy, I'll admit. <laughs> you got some very, very strong flavors in there. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have a lot of experience with crab, but I want to try something new. I make a crab and ricotta stuffed cannelloni. I want to show them that I can make a pasta, but it's also a, an opportunity to redeem myself. I'm going to put everything I have into this damn dish. I got it, baby! 
I'm making a Greek octopus with a tomato reduction. My husband and I go to restaurants a lot. It's definitely one of our hobbies, so I know I can elevate it with the plating and the look. For the past few months, I started developing an idea for a restaurant. It's not part of my business plan to go home on this challenge. I would have been great with that octopus. Chanel's a badass. I made a crab and ricotta stuffed cannelloni with crab, tomato, and caper sauce. Have you worked with crab before? Not much. And you got first pick? Yes. Well, it sounds like you took a bit of a risk. I did. Well, at first glance, I think the dish looks very eye-catching and appealing. What I'm looking for in a cannelloni dish like this is the lightness to that pasta, a good amount of filling but I still want to be able to taste that sweet, succulent crab meat. That is very good. Oh, thank you. You are masterful when it comes to flavors and building sauces, and the sauce on this cannelloni just helps elevate the sweet flavors of that crab meat. That I'd be happy to have on my restaurant menu. Oh, thank you. What an honor. So it's a Greek octopus served with tomato medley reduction and crispy chickpeas and potatoes for freshness. You picked the octopus. Did you cook it before? No, never. You pick something that you've never cooked before in an elimination round. I'm honestly here to grow and to learn. I like my octopus tender on the inside and crispy on the outside. So, do you think you got it? I think so. You got it! Yay! You hit that Mediterranean flavor. I feel the cherry tomatoes, I feel the garlic, the olives. It's a perfect complement to that octopus. Now, I would suggest make the sauce less chunky, okay? To get this nice balance of texture. But other than that, it's got a lot of the Greek classics in there, but it's done in a nouvelle Chanel way. Exactly. <laughs> Stop, Chanel. Just keep stirring. Brown, 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 brown. As a kid, I loved eating bagels and cream cheese. It was something I ate almost every day. So here I'm doing a deconstructed lox and bagel with salmon tartare, a bagel twill, and cream cheese. I need to show the judges that I'm able to execute my out-of-the-box ideas. This time, I'm going to finish on time in a composed manner, not like a crazy madman. <laughs> That's the dream, right? Oh, I'm pouring sweat. I am moving lightning fast with 20 minutes left, and my wheels take almost exactly 20 minutes. Still too much. Wow, this batter's thick. This has to get done for the dish to even have a chance. <sighs> Gotta crank it up. I am so excited. Hearing my name, I am absolutely stunned. I made a deconstructed lox and bagel with uh, salmon tartare and two kinds of whipped cream cheese, one tomato and one scallion, and a bagel twill. I definitely get lox, cream cheese, and bagel. It's recognizable, but it's elevated. And this is what elevation is. See how it tastes. I like it. You cut the salmon very uniform. It gives it structure, and that is very wise. I think we're just starting to see you shine. Thank you, chef. Great cracker, lovely creaminess to that cheese. Definitely get the tomato, the onion, the dill, the capers. I think the salmon could have done just with a touch more seasoning and just a little bit more acidity. Today, you took a quantum leap forward. Thank you, chef. Nicely done. Thank you. Jennifer is eating up a lot of valuable time right now butchering her fish. This feels embarrassing to say, like as someone who comes from the East Coast, but I've literally never filleted a whole fish before. Hi there, Jennifer. <gasps> Hello, Chef Michael. <laughs> you got given the fish. Yes, I did. And you spent a fair bit of time removing the fillets. Yes, I did. I am making an ebi sudai carpaccio. I'm going to be deep frying the body as well and serving the carpaccio in the body. On the carcass. Yes, yes. That sounds a very interesting and uh, unique presentation. Do you think this could be a bit of a do-over after those fish cakes? Maybe, I'm excited for the opportunity to work with fish again. I love the positivity that you bring to every challenge. Thank you so Good much, luck, Chef. And use that time wisely. Yes, Chef. This abalone is very tough, it's like rubber. So I know I have to really break down its fibers or else it's just gonna stay rubbery. 
Chanel. Hi, chef. So getting abalone yes. from Chrissy, do you think that was a gift or was that something to maybe trip you up? I'll take it as a compliment that you wanted to give me a challenge. This is a very difficult ingredient to work with. You have to elevate it, make it shine. Yes. So tell me what the plan is. I really wanted to go Japanese, so I'm doing uh, sushi rice. I'm going to do uh, kale go mai, and then I'm going to do the panko crusted abalone. Hopefully it'll be tender and tasty. Hopefully. This is, hands down, the most nervous that I've been, because it's a whole carcass on a plate, and that's all. This is an ebisudai carpaccio, and I've made a sauce with some chili, lime, garlic, ginger, and cilantro, and I've served it in the fried body. Six seasons, I've never seen anything like this. That's a good thing. Oh, OK. Thank you, Chef. It's pretty amazing. The seasoning, it's just perfectly balanced. Wow. Last challenge, you struggled. This challenge, you're back in the game. You have incredible skill. Thank you so much, Chef. You know, you hit it on the spot. <sighs> the texture was perfect. The way that you preserve and reuse the carcass of this fish, I am deeply touched. Because Asians don't like to waste anything. This is how we are so crazy rich. <laughs> now, you know in Asia, only the honor guests of the table gets to sink their teeth into this. The eyeballs. Today, I think the person to be honored is you. Are you sure? Yes. Thank you very much, Chef. You have certainly honored this beloved Asian ingredient. You did it justice. I'm touched. Thank you, Chef. So I did a crispy sushi rice, a kale go mai, and then I did a panko abalone. The presentation, it's very neat. So. Abalone, it's a luxurious and beloved dish in Asia, especially Hong Kong. The cook has to be perfect. The abalone, you got it. Good! Perfectly seasoned and very tender. It's got that nice crunch. The sushi rice, that is almost perfect. <laughs> I actually think Chrissy wants to throw you a curveball. <laughs> and you hit a home run. Thank you, Chef. Ooh. In the secret boxes that you picked are a variety of exotic ingredients, including black cod, escarole, and passion fruit. Tamarind paste. Oh my god. Uh-oh. I have never eaten black cod before, but we'll see how it goes. I would say I'm a risk taker for sure. I always say if it's not scary, it's probably not worth doing. I see some fun little Thai flavors here. The ginger and the tamarind paste. And uh, I want to do a really fresh Thai-inspired dish. My experience with black cod is I've had it in a restaurant before, and it was served with like a crispy skin. I'm going to do my best to copy that. I'm going to get a cast iron pan, piping hot, and I'm going to sear it skin side down. Hey there, Chrissy. Hello. I am delighted that you took the risk you took by choosing the risky box. Yeah. Is black cod an ingredient that is familiar to you with your Portuguese background? Yes, this dish, it's sort of a play on a very humble dish my mom makes with boiled salted cod. I'm gonna do a pan-fried cod. It's gonna have a nice fresh vinaigrette with the fingerling potatoes. Wow, that sounds like you've got a lot of great elements there. Thanks very much, Chrissy. Thank you. I'm so excited to hear my name called for the first time for a mystery box. So I did a crispy skin cod with a Romanesco puree with a treviso slaw and a tamarind citrus vinaigrette. This black cod does look very well cooked. It has a nice glisten and shine to it, which shows it's maintained the moisture. That piece was cooked beautifully. So those flavors, fresh and clean, they sing to you. So this is an interesting addition, the Romanesco puree here. Light green color, wonderful creamy texture just by the fork. Super creamy, <laughs> super dreamy. Just a tad on the underside of the seasoning for me. 
but very, very nice. You truly took a risk. And it seems to have paid off. Well done. Thank you. You know what the star of the show is here? The Treviso. Really amazing. The flavors, they're very fresh, they're very clean. Great acidity to them. Great job. Thank you, Chef. So this is based on a comfort dish that my mom made for us growing up. I did a pan-fried black cod over a warm potato salad with a bechamel roasted baby Romanesco. Great color on that skin. Thank you. Well, let's take a closer look, shall we? I think that looks pretty spot on. That black cod is delicious. Hey, thank it's, you. There's lots of good flavors. Yes. And the little Romanesca, like little mountains peeking out of the pot here. Feels a little on the underdone side. Okay. Wow, I think it is the sauce that really accents the flavor of it. Yay. <laughs> Great flavors. Thank you. Good technique. Everything is different on the plate, but yet when it comes together, it seems to work extraordinarily well. Very impressive, very impressive. I like the presentation. Thank you. You chose a risky box. Yep. But you took a lot of your childhood memories. Yes. Potato salad with vinegar. Perfectly cooked. Love the texture. Thank you. Season is well balanced. I think in this challenge, you took a risk and <laughs> you played it safe. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I think that's a very, very good strategy. Thank you, Chef. Good job. So I chose the passion fruit. I know passion fruit and I understand the flavors of it. So I'm pretty confident. I would love to work with passion fruit. I love the sourness, the sweetness, all those different flavors coming together. But you have to be careful because it's very, very acidic, so it could be overpowering. So today I am making a scallop fritter with some seared scallop and sweet and spicy passion fruit glaze and a nice passion fruit uh, vinaigrette to go with a salad. My auntie Joan gave me a nice jolt of motivation, so I gotta stay in here as long as I can for her. Okay, lots of passion fruit in here. <laughs> I made a scallop fritter glazed with passion fruit and chilies and a fresh salad with passion fruit vinaigrette. Well, I see color, I see refinement, and when I cut into it, I'm expecting to get something airy with a lot of flavor. I'm getting exactly all of that. Oh, it's crispy on the outside, fluffy and tasty on the inside. The passion fruit has such a big punch of flavor. This is restaurant quality. Thank you very much. Wow, really delicious. I love that passion fruit that comes out. You really understand how all these flavors play with each other. It's very sophisticated. It's one of the best dishes we've seen this season. Oh, wow. Oh, I guess. I'm working on the rundown, so I got a head, a tail. Oh, yeah, boil it. I'm doing this for my dad. He always made rundown at his restaurant, and it would fly off the shelves. That's going to cook up a bit. Hi there, Andre. Hey, Chef. So tell me about your appetizer. A rundown is basically fish cooked down in coconut milk. And today, I'm elevating it by putting lobster with a kalalu puree and boiled dumpling. So I'm assuming that you've cooked lobster this way before, maybe? Never. Never cooked lobster? Never cooked lobster. Do you think that was wise, pulling lobster out on such an important night like tonight? I gotta pull out all the guns today, so... Taste every element, right? Yes. Seasons like a king. Roz, I need a sous chef, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that I never cooked lobster before. This is my last cook in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. You gotta go big or go home. First up for tasting is Andre's Lobster Rundown with a coconut callaloo puree on a bed of boiled dumplings. I love what I see on the plate. It's Caribbean Carnival. It's all about those great colors. And I think the proportions are really spot on. You can see there's a lot of imagination behind the dish. It is a good balance of savory, sweet, bitter, and you can identify it all. Nothing is overpowering each other, which is very, very important. You can see the lobster is perfectly cooked. 
can't believe this is Andre's first time ever cooking a lobster. This caloulou puree. It is silky smooth, and I like the coconut reacting with the usually very bitter flavor coming from this very leafy vegetable. There's only one misstep in my opinion. The dumplings are slightly tough, and that's because his water was not boiling. Oil. Andy, Andy, yeah. where are you from, Andy? East Coast in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And your biggest nightmare is the lobster? You, have you considered moving to Calgary? You know, you know? <laughs> I've practiced a lot of lobsters at this point. That disgusting lobster dish from season five. I feel like I'm yeah. drinking seawater. I'm blown away that I served this. So what are you gonna do with that lobster? We have a butter poach going here. Mm -hmm. Gonna do a really deep, beautiful, smoky cream sauce. Mm. I've got some dill oil, I've got some buttermilk biscuits. You would never have a lobster without a biscuit back home. I see the confidence. Good luck. Thank you so much. I'm making monkfish sinigang. It's a traditional Filipino dish of tamarind paste and fish sauce. The last time I cooked monkfish, Chef Alvin told me that I did not treat the protein properly because it's considered poor man's lobster. That's like using filet mignon in a stew. <clears throat> I have to tie the monkfish so it stays round while I cook it. Feel good, I'm ready to redeem myself with this dish. Uni is very delicate, so I'm gonna treat it very nicely. So today I'm gonna be making a amos bosch. I'm gonna have it with uni butter and coconut noodles. And instead of rice, I'm gonna have rice paper. And I'm gonna fry it so it's nice and crispy and make a cup out of it. Okay, well listen, good luck. I'm excited to see what you do. Thank you, Chef. Andy, please bring up your dish. All that's going through my head is, Andy, did you overcook that lobster? Did you? So today I made a lobster and smoked oyster chowder with a buttermilk biscuit. That certainly is a buttermilk biscuit. <laughs> it's huge. The presentation of the dish, great quantity of lobster in there, absolutely exquisite. Look at that, dripping with all that goodness. <laughs> The lobster is spot on. This has great sophistication, great flavors, great balance. It really is a dish that I'd expect to eat at a restaurant. Well, thank you, chef. Well done, Andy, thank you. Thank you. It's a monkfish sinigang. On the bottom is a tamarind and balsamic glaze and some watermelon radish for garnish. Amazing presentation. Thank you, Chef. I can't wait to sink my teeth in this. Everything is there. You got the fruitiness coming from the tamarind and the extra layer of flavor coming from the balsamic. Now, the monkfish is a poor man's lobster. Man's lobster. Okay? And I can tell you, this is a rich man's dish. Yes. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I made a pickled guava skin and uni butter coconut pasta. I mean, this is a complete change from what I saw last time. Beautiful presentation. I love the colors. I love the natural feel. I really love that. This is wow. I love the different textures. You got the crunch coming from the cracker, you got the silky smooth from the sea urchin, yeah. and then that pickle. Gives it a bit of acidity, gives it a bit of freshness. You got the full balance in here. And you spend all that time in the front line. This dish could put you at the front of this line. Thank you. Mackie. Oh, wow. Oh, that's wow. so intricate. I eat maki fairly often. Me and my fiance love Japanese food, but I don't make a lot. Great maki wraps a delicate balance of flavors into a roll that also delights the eyes. We want your maki customized to reflect your personality. Oh, wow. Your roll must be in the urumaki style, which means it's rolled inside out with the rice on the outside. At least one of your fillings must be a tempura element. And it must also have a thinly sliced ingredient of your choice as a topping. Hey, Jen, how are you? Who 
I'm a little frazzled, but I'm gonna get it done. How are you going to personalize this mac? Um, I really like a poke bowl, so I decided to take some fresh red tuna and marinate it in some soy sauce, togarashi, ginger, and a little bit of sesame oil. Just focus on each task. You have what it takes, you know that, right? Damn right I do. One minute! You only have one more minute left. Get the toppings on. Let's go. go. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's push. Come on, use the one minute. Andy, you gotta start plating. You gotta start plating. Nice, Jen. Thank you. 30 seconds. Get those smacky onto a plate. Do this. Come on, guys. Go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Trim that down, Marissa. That's gonna be big. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Good job, guys. Good job. Wow, good for you. Hi, Jen. Hi, Chef Alvin. So I made a ginger soy tuna roll, and I put some crispy asparagus tempura just for a little bit of crunch. Okay, the first test you do for a mac make sure it doesn't fall apart. Hold it like this and turn. So obviously it's well constructed. Thank you. But taste, taste is... Taste is king. Mmm. I like it. <laughs> I think it's got nice flavor coming from the tuna. Thank you. It's well seasoned. Maybe a little bit more filling. Okay. But other than that, the flavors are right. The texture is holding. This is definitely a Mackey to look forward to. Thank you so much. I got tomatillos and tortilla press. A tomatilla is like a, like a tomato, but it's more sour. I am going to be making a deconstructed tostada, so it's almost like a tostada flipped upside down. I just love these Mexican flavors. I grew up with them. My family always ate Latin American food. Using my tortilla press to make tortillas. Then I add my halibut and my tomatillos I'm roasting down so I can make a beautiful green sauce. All the flavors are there. I chose Colongo and Velute as uh, my main inspirations. Uh, I'm gonna be making a seafood and galango bun bao. And bun bao is a steamed Vietnamese rice cake. Galango is often compared to ginger, but it doesn't have that much flavor. I'm using galango in my seafood stock, my fish and shrimp marinade, and in my bun bao. When I cook Vietnamese food, I'm thinking about my mom, because she's the one that cooked us all of our Vietnamese home dishes growing up. I'm not going home tonight. I chose the tortilla press and the tomatillos, and my dish is a toma tostada inversion. Well, I have to tell you, you really captured the essence of modern Mexican cuisine so beautifully. I'm curious to see what it tastes like, though. Fingers crossed. This is really sensational. <laughs> the tostada is so beautiful, very crispy, very light. Halibut ceviche, lots of zing. Only fault, there's not enough of it. Citrus, salt, really well executed. Thank you. I chose galongo and velute. I made a seafood and galongo bun bao. So I gotta waste no time and pick up on all these flavors, hopefully. You know how to cook shrimp. <laughs> it's been cooked with a great deal of care, passion, and intelligence, smarts. Boy, oh boy. The umami level in your velute is amazing. And the shrimp are so beautiful and sweet. And the galangal, it just sings. It's a great dish. Well done. That velute is incredible. I love it. The fish sauce away, it shines through. The gal and gal, it's just there in the background. Great flavor, beautiful looking dish. I'm not sure I would change much about it, to be honest with you. Really, really sensational. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef. Today I'm making salmon and hummus. Very simple. I'm cooking this dish because it reminds me of my mother's favorite way to cook salmon. My mother is very important to me because my father and I had a troubled relationship, and in his eyes, men are not supposed to cook. 
And my subtle rebellion was spending time watching mom cook and taking interests in what she was doing versus doing the things that I'm supposed to do. So her and I bonded, and now my mother's the reason I cook. My mother is my hero, and any chance I get to pay homage, I do. I'm making a stewed okra with tomatoes, pickled wild rice, a beef balsamic gastrique, a smoked hummus puree, and I'm making a bug to wheel. Hey, Taya. Hi. I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff on the go here, so tell me what's going on. I am making salmon with sweet potato puree, and I've got some cactus salsa. I'm choosing this salmon for my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law lives in Houston, Texas, and she came up to Vancouver Island, and she is obsessed now with salmon. Just trying to like temper the chocolate so it doesn't melt all over the place. I just took it off, and I'm going to add a little bit more chocolate, and once it stops melting, then that means it's tempered, and then I can add my crickets in. Tempering chocolate is a huge time waster. You have to pay attention to it, and I'm getting behind on all my other components. Am I gonna have enough time? I don't know, but I don't want to play it safe, so this is what I gotta do. Taya is using the chocolate mork to cover her crickets. That's risky. If it pays off, though, it's gonna be delicious. We're making some chocolate crickets. At least they're dead now. I did a pan-seared salmon, tempered squash blossoms, some puffed wild rice, sweet potato puree, and I dipped the crickets in the chocolate. It's kind of like the mud in a forest. You know, you've got little bugs in the mud. I think this plate looks terrific. It's certainly restaurant-quality plating. It looks inviting. It looks colorful. And what was the cook you're hoping for on this beautiful piece of salmon? I'm hoping for a medium rare. Is that what I'm going to see here, Taya? I sure hope so. Well, let's see. If I overcooked this salmon, I'm basically buying my one-way ticket out this door. Look at that. That is as close to medium rare as I think you could have gotten it. That salmon tastes as if it was just pulled out of the ocean. It is so fresh, so clean, and so natural. That sweet potato sauce, it makes the perfect backfoil for a salmon dish like this because it adds that next layer of sort of creamy mouthfeel. It's a cook that shows incredible promise. Thank you. I've never had chocolate-covered crickets on salmon. I would never combine chocolate and salmon, but I'm glad you did. It's a really great balance. It's unexpected. The one thing I have to comment on is the fish, I believe, is under-seasoned. You could use a little more sea salt. Definitely not perfect, but bold. Thank you. Today, I've prepared for you cricket-crusted salmon and chickpea puree. I pickled the wild rice in fennel pollen and the grainy mustard, and I made a beet cricket to wheel to garnish the plate with. The presentation is really terrific. It is eye-catching, colorful, intriguing. So I'm delighted to see that you've been able to up your plating game. Thank you, Chef. The cook on the salmon, what are we hoping for? Medium rare. Let's see if you achieve that. Looks good to me. Spot on. Thank you, Chef. It's a delight to eat. It really is. The salmon is so very moist and flavorful. And your hummus has a nice Middle Eastern, North African flavor to it. Yeah. And just that hint of smokiness. Really well executed, and you should be proud of yourself. Thank you, Chef. I was very happy with this dish. It's a beautiful dish. Thank you. Really well executed. That hummus is so light. I taste your heritage in it. I taste the drive that you have right now, the focus. I'm here to win, Chef. Head back to your station. Thank you, Chef. I'm working on the second course. I'm going to be making a stuffed seafood dumpling. This is my first savory dumpling dish here, so this is how I make my money. Taya's already had a chance to make a stuffed pasta in the vegan challenge, but I haven't had a chance to showcase a savory stuffed dumpling pasta yet, and I really want this opportunity to do so. Me, I believe you're responsible for the next course. I am. I haven't had a chance to express myself with savory dumplings yet, and I really hope that they see that this dish is unique. 
I always like to put my own spin on things. I'm very sorry for the messy plates. Thank you. Looks amazing, really. May, please describe your dish. Um, so I made a lobster and spot prawn cappelletti. I also made a seafood stock out of the lobster shells and the shrimp shells. And then I made a chili oil with prawn heads. And then I just finished it off with a touch of miso and a touch of yuzu in there for some flavor complexities. It smells really good. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Andrew, does it taste as good as it looks? I think it's wonderful. It does look great. I like the broth. I like the play on Italian, but using some of these Asian components. I would say maybe just use either shrimp or lobster, not both. I do agree with Andrew. I think either spot prawns or lobster, maybe just lobster in this case would be better, especially with the spot prawns cook texture it can become a little bit mushy sometimes because of its delicate nature. Beautiful presentation as always, May. I like all the flavors. The yuzu is really surprising. The broth is delicious. Texturally, I would have liked a little bit more like chunks of lobster in there. I like that bite. I actually agree for the most part uh, most of the critiques about my dish. It's a very strong dish, mate. You got some very strong components in there. Broth is beautiful. You should not have used the two to do filling. Spot pond, I would never try to overcook it because it gets very mushy. Other than that, not enough caviar, but <laughs> that's me, Rich Alvin. I enjoyed the dish immensely. The flavors, the taste, the texture. I do share Alvin's comments. I'd like a little more caviar on it. <laughs> I think, May, you keep surprising us with your level of skill. The pasta is perfectly rolled with regards to spot prawns. I would have just laid those on top of the pasta and then draped a little bit of the hot chili oil on top of them and lightly cooked them, just kind of kissed them with the oil, and you'd have a masterpiece. Thank you, Chef. For my appetizer, I'm making a spot prawn ceviche served with a Thai coconut soup ice cream, which is going to act as the soup of the ceviche. So as it melts, it keeps your ceviche cold. I'm doing this appetizer for my fiance because we were supposed to have a destination wedding in Thailand. So since we couldn't, I'm going to try to bring a piece of Thailand to my appetizer today. Andy, how are we doing, Chef? Did you ever think you would be back in a MasterChef Canada finale? Not in a million years. <laughs> Walk me through your first course. So anywhere you go on the East Coast, you're going to find incredible seafood platters. So we've got uh, pan-fried scallops, some cornmeal fried oysters. We're going to have some pickled mussels, some green apple vin to lighten it up, and a big dollop of caviar to get the party rolling. Just remember one thing, though. Make sure they're not too rustic. Elevate your dishes 100%. Push yourself. Thanks, Chef. You're doing great, Andy. So hot in this jacket. I'm doing a snapper crudo with crispy skin, and then I'm doing a whey cucumber foam and a compressed cucumber in lime. Snapper is something that is very common on Vancouver Island. And as a child, I used to go fishing all the time with my dad, and we used to go to the marina and eat fish tacos. So this is kind of like a super elevated version of a fish taco. Okay, deep breaths. The first appetizer up for tasting is Christopher's Spot Prawn Ceviche, marinated in calamansi and chili, and served with a Tom Kagai ice cream. I like the plate, it's very colorful. The Tom Yum Kai is gonna melt and provide the dressing. These flavors are super dramatic. It is really about the Tongai being so icy cold and super refreshing with a little bit of heat to it. Those gorgeous, sweet, tender, succulent shrimp served raw are just loving bathing in this bath of wonderful flavors. Overall, great control of flavor, acidity. I wish there was a little more of the calamansi dressing because it had wonderful depth of flavor, but you needed more of it to cut through the heaviness and the richness of the coconut. The next dish up for tasting is Taya's, a red snapper crudo with a buttermilk whey foam, masa tuile, and compressed cucumbers. You know, I like the presentation a lot. I think the foam is perfectly executed. I like the cucumbers, the way they're just these little wafers. And I like the way she charred the top of the skin. That was a really nice little finish to the dish. I find the flavors to be a lot more subtle. There's a little punch from the jalapeno pepper, but for me, it is lacking just a little bit of simple sea salt. 
I love the way that the acidity, the chili is coming in from oils, in foams. The flavors are coming in different directions. Good concept, love the presentation, and hey, it's innovative. Last up is Andy's appetizer, a seafood platter containing seared scallop, crispy oysters, pickled mussels, and an apple vinaigrette with caviar. I like his simple approach to the plating. It is clean and tidy. I love the beautiful green vinaigrette on the bottom. That really is a backfoil that shows off the gorgeous seafood. I love the different flavors coming out. The scallop perfectly cooked. The pickle mussel, well done. The acidity goes very nice with the texture and the umami coming from the mussel. And the green apple is a nice touch. It's a very strong dish in terms of both taste and execution. The caviar I thought was a great touch. It really shows luxury and confidence. I think this is one of his crowning moments. I'm making an East Coast lobster roll with a compressed shoe paste as the bun, salt and vinegar potato chips, and a Tidal Bay Sauvignon. To get started on the lobster, I'm doing a quick blanch on the tails and then break them out of the shells. Next up, I'm placing my lobster tails into a backpack, and then I add in tarragon, butter, white wine, salt. The lobster roll is Nova Scotia, and I'm so excited to be able to elevate this so that the judges love it too. The first entree up for tasting is Andy's, a lobster roll on a compressed shoe bun with salt and vinegar chips, and a white wine sabillon. I love the presentation. He has basically taken apart the lobster roll, put it back together again, but in a beautiful way. I've never seen a lobster roll quite like this. The zabayon is beautiful. It's very light, very ethereal. The lobster is cooked to perfection. Unfortunately for me, I feel like he cheapened the dish by putting a shoe pastry underneath it. It feels more like an appetizer than a main course. I think had he put something in the shoe pastry, a little bit of cheese or lemon zest, it would have just tipped it over the edge for me. But otherwise, the lobster is beautifully cooked, and the sabillon sauce, that balance of acidity, creaminess, nicely seasoned, absolute delight. 